Today's message is called, But You. And I'm, I got to tell you, it's not going to be a very long message. And I, I hate saying that because every time I say that, it turns into a long message. Uh, but I really believe this is going to be a short message. But it is a very important one. Very important one. And it sets the stage. Listen, guys, we are standing at the edge of a new year. This is the last Sunday of 2020. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are looking back and saying, we hate you 2020, right? We never want another year like 2020. And we're looking to the new new year. We're looking forward to 2021, hoping that it will be better. And we always do that. Right. We always do that with the new year. It's a time to reset. It's a time to, you know, people will always, uh, you know, set up all these th these these ideas and like, hey, I'm going to have this uh, this New Year's resolution. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do all that kind of stuff and all these things. But even more this year, people are looking to 2020 and they're saying, oh, my goodness. Yeah. 2020 needs to be this new year, this new thing that we that, that we are heading into. And, and we're praying that it is. But here's the thing, 2021 is not going to be any better. In fact, 2021 is going to be worse. And I, people will tell me, Todd, you're being a wet blanket. Todd, you're not walking by faith. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm being rational here. And I'm, and I'm also being spiritual. And I'm trying to, to relay that to you this morning and rational I'm being rational because there are things that are in the works, things that are contrary to freedom and things that are contrary to the peace that we have uh, experienced for all of our lifetime. If you are paying attention, you are seeing it. It is deliberate. It is so deliberate and so in your face. But most people don't see it and most people won't acknowledge it because they don't want to think about it. They don't want to think about what that means. Let me tell you, there are people that I know that say, Todd, I don't want to hear because I'll have nightmares. I don't want to hear about that kind of stuff because I won't be able to concentrate on anything else. I completely understand it. I get it. But as a pastor, as someone who seeks the Lord, as someone who is looking for the second coming and the return of Jesus Christ and wants to live the life that Jesus wants, I have to be truthful and faithful to what I feel the Lord is leading me and the Holy Spirit is telling me. And so this is spiritual as well, not just rational, looking at it from my own two eyes and, and, and from what I hear and what I see and what I read, but spiritual as well. As we get closer to living out the last days, and people are like, Todd, the last days, we're in the last days. I believe that we are on the edge of the last days. Everything is pointing to it. If it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's got to be a duck. And there are things that are happening that you're not hearing about unless you're looking for it. There are things that are happening and paying attention. There are things that in the Middle East that are happening that if you're not really truly paying attention to it, it's not going to be on your radar at all. At all, Because right here, we've just been dealing with, you know, <clears throat> COVID. We've been dealing with lockdowns. We've been dealing with, you know, the, the holiday season and, and gearing up and all of that kind of stuff. But there are things that are happening. So if we pay attention spiritually, and we're supposed to, we are supposed to be looking for those signs. Jesus said that. And Jesus got on to the religious leaders because they didn't get on, you know, didn't pay attention to the signs. And the thing is, is that people don't want to hear this. I completely understand it. We rather have the Joel Osteen, your best life ever, right? If that was the message, like this is the way that you can have your best life ever. 2021 is going to be your best life ever. And I'm not saying that it won't be your best life ever, ever in Jesus, but it's not going to be your best life ever when you look at just the years that you have lived and the blessings that you have received and the material wealth that you have received and, and that you have had for your life. We rather have all these blessings. We rather have blessings upon blessings. And we we love to, that the that preachers on TBN, that they would say, yeah, he, yeah you're just be blessed. You're going to be blessed. This is going to be your year. 
After all, we live in the United States of America, right? This is God's country. It was founded on biblical principles, and we have been blessed for so many years. But all those people who are looking to 2021 and not going into it with the right perspective are going to be sadly disappointed. But with all that said, listen, with all the doom and gloom and all of that, we are far from over as far as completely giving in and going into a corner and wrapping up in a little fetal position and rocking ourselves until you know Jesus comes back. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. We are still here. We are alive and we are kicking. And we are living between, more than ever, we are living between the 69th and the 70th week of Daniel. It is still the church age, the time of the Gentiles, the time when, when, when the church is, is, is here on this earth. There's going to be a time when it's not. There's going to be a time where we are poof, we fly, we do the Superman thing, right? And Jesus raptures us up and we, we are caught up in the skies. But until then, we are still here. And we are called to be more than afraid and more than fearful and more than going to a corner and, and rocking ourselves to sleep, you know, every single night, living in fear of what is out there. That is not what we're supposed to be doing. The Lord has a word for us. I want to share that with us. I want to share with you today and in the coming weeks as we move into 2021. I want to tell you, but you. I want to tell you, but you will. Now turn with me, if you have your Bibles or you're taking notes, to Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. We've talked about this scripture many, many times. And I don't see, and, and, and I feel led to, to be able to share this with you again. So let's read this. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders, I'm going to come back to that word, orders there, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen, to these he also presented himself alive after his suffering, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of forty days, and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which, he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs, which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. And they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Amen. Let's talk a little bit about this here. In verse 2, I said I was going to come back to that word orders. Now, some of your translations might say instructions, or they might even say commands. And if we go back and we look at that really, really quickly, he says, until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders. Again, some of your translations say given instructions or given commands. But the word orders really means, and you need to understand it, it carries with it an authority. If you were given instructions, if I was giving you know, my boys instructions, hey guys, you need to do it this way. You, you might take, they might take those instructions and they might 
use them. They might not go word for word. They might say, oh, well, I found a better way of doing it, right? I, I found a better and easier a shortcut. Dad was kind of off in the way that he said it or, you know, he's doing it old fashioned or whatever, right? But that's not the, the word that we see here. The word that we see here orders is like a military command. It is like a general giving orders to his soldiers. And in the military, you don't take the general's orders and say, okay, well, let me make it my own. Let me go ahead and, and figure it all uh, out. And, and maybe there's a shortcut. Maybe the, you know, the general, you know, he's been around for a while. He's kind of old. He doesn't know how to do it. The new way, we got new technology. No, you do it the way that the general has told you. The orders come down. And that's the, the, the idea of this word here. There's no discussion. You do it. You do it this way. But even after the disciples received their orders, they still didn't understand everything, right? They still didn't. Jesus had given them this order. Hey, these orders, this is what you need to do. But they're like, okay, so now, um, Jesus, are you restoring the kingdom of Israel now? Is this, is this what you're doing? The Holy Spirit had not fallen upon them. They're still asking about restoring their kingdom. They're still, you know, this, this, this Jesus uh, is still talking to, to them and having to get them to understand, no, 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 no. This is not what it's about. It's not up to you to know the times. It's not up to you to know when that is going to happen. Okay, that is, that is the Father's time, timing. That is the Father's thing that He is doing. I have given you a command and you will receive power. Man, that is some of the most powerful things that Jesus has ever told his disciples. You will receive power. Not, hey, you're going to go and try to figure all this out. You're going to go and do it under your own power. You're going to do it and make sure that you take your vitamin D and your vitamin C and make sure that you, know, you work out and, and you're ready to go. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And, see, that word and is when we, we learned in grammar in school, in English, at, at an early age in grade school, that word and is a conjunction. It's combining two things together. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses all over the earth. The Holy Spirit wasn't given to us for feel good, warming our heart time. And many times, you know, when the type of churches that we go to where we have worship music and, and, and uh, you know, maybe it's extended. It's not just a one or two hymns, not one or two songs, but we really value worship. And, and, and when I say worship, I know that we've talked about it here in the last couple of weeks. But when we talk about worship, a lot of the times we're talking about the music and we value the music aspect and that time to be able to just close our eyes and lift our hands and sing songs and, and praise the Lord. And we value that kind of, 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 of worship time. Sometimes the, the worship leader or the pastor will get up and say, wow, there's this great move of the Holy Spirit or, or, or hey, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit right now. And that's good. And that's... I think God gives us those times. But when that happens, we're not always being a witness for the Lord. Some people would say, yeah, I'm being a witness. I got my car in the, in the parking lot. I got my, you know, I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm being a witness there. And really, I'm a, the people that are out on Sunday morning driving bound by the parking lot, those people are probably already going to church anyway, Right. It's not that much of a witness. Really what we're talking about when we say this is a, a move of the Holy Spirit or very be, let's be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Let's, we're, we're really talking about a heightened state of emotion. We're talking about, we're talking about you know, we, we really feel close to the Lord at this time. And don't get me wrong, there are times when we need that. There are times when we need to be refreshed. There are times where we need to be empowered. But what do you do with it afterwards? You see, what we have uh, 
what we have done in the modern church is go to church on Sunday morning to get refreshed and to get empowered and to feel good and to go back to living our lives the way that we live on Monday through Saturday. Uh, and, and that's what we do on a regular basis. We go to church, we get refreshed, we get pumped up, we get whatever, whatever you want to call it so that we can go back living life the way that we live it. And we never talk about the other aspect of this here in Acts chapter 1, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. We don't, we, we don't talk about that. We don't do that. We don't do that effectively. We go, we get refreshed, we get empowered, and then we leave the being a witness to the missionaries. We leave the being a witness to the people that are evangelists and street evangelists. Listen, this is uncomfortable to hear. I know because we all have fallen into this place where we are, right? We go to church and we, we do the pew thing, we do the chair thing, we do the worship thing, we do the, 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 the meet and greet, and we do all of that kind of stuff. And we're witnesses to a point out there, but not the witnesses that we should be. Listen, now more than ever, now more than ever, as we stand on the edge of 2021, looking forward to what God has for us, staring into whatever is going to come, whatever Satan is going to throw, whatever governments are going to throw, whatever viruses are going to throw, whatever the economy is going to throw, all of that, but standing there empowered and ready in the power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness for the Lord. More, now more than ever, that is needed. And we need to be the people that are ready to move forward into 2021 that way. I want to look at another scripture, Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 24. So let me go ahead and pull that up and get that ready. Here we have a, a lot of red letters here, right? And a lot of red letters to, to look at. And so uh, again, Acts, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 24. Here we go. Now, after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. And he was saying to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money belt, no bag, no shoes, and greet no one on the way. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking what they give you. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not keep moving from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat what is set before you. And heal those in it who are sick. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your city, which clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I say to you, it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, which occurred in you, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you not be exalted to heaven, will you? You will be brought down to Hades. The one who listens to you listens to me. And the one who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. 
At that very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this was well, was well pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I say to you that many prophets and kings wish to see the things which you see and did not see them, and to hear the things which you hear and did not hear them. Amen. Let's talk a little bit about this here. As we look at this, Jesus was giving instructions to the disciples. Now we look at the 12 disciples, but Jesus had a lot more disciples that were there. The 12 were just the inner circle. And then the, the three, you know, Peter, James, and John were the inner, inner circle, right? But there was a lot of other disciples that were following him and uh, who, who were there. And so he sends out the 70 and he sends them out to just go all over the countryside to, to minister to people. And he says this, pray to the Lord of the harvest for laborers. Not only pray, but he says, beseech, beg, beg for the Lord of the harvest for laborers. Listen, there is always going to be a need for laborers out there. Somehow, some way in the modern church, we have got to the point where the, 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 the regular believers, we, we have we missed the priesthood of all believers, understanding that every single one of us has this responsibility. It doesn't fall to pastors and missionaries and evangelists. It falls to every single person who Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior to go out there and to be to beseech the Lord of the harvest, but also to be a laborer out there in the field, in the field that God has given you. You are a witness out there. You have received power from the Holy Spirit and you are to be a witness out there. So pray to the Lord that he would send laborers and pray to the Lord that he would send you. What greater thing on this earth is there than to be able to lead someone to Jesus Christ and to have their names written in the book of life? Jesus told the disciples, hey, don't worry about that Satan and the demons were subject to your name. Praise the Lord that your name is written and recorded in the book. What greater, greater thing. That is something that will last. Listen, all the Nobel Peace Prizes, all the Guinness Book of World Records, all the, the big buildings and all the things that, that, that have been built throughout history here on this earth are meaningless. But the things that you do for the Lord, the things that will last forever, is that person that is in your, at your workplace, that neighbor who is there who just needs a friend and, and you can lead them to the Lord, that person on the side of the road that you just so happen to give a dollar to and you're able to strike up a conversation or whatever it is uh, that you are there and the Lord has put in your sphere of influence, be a laborer that God wants you to be the next thing that he says and this is important as he says as i send you i am sending you out as lambs among wolves it's a dark world out there it is a crazy world it always has been and it will continue to be like that there's going to be times where people are want to tear you are going to want to tear you up that the things of God are not going to be just accepted and like oh yeah hey let me just take in the things of God there are going to be wolves out there and they do not like the things of God. They do not love the things of God. They want to do anything they can to shut it down. But we can't allow that to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. That's why you receive power. The disciples came back. The 70 came back and said, man, even the demons were subject to your name. Even the wolves are subject to your name. Right? To the name of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. When you go out there in the power of the Holy Spirit and you are a witness, man, nothing can stop you. God 
has given this to you for this time. The thing is, is to be active in the world. Jesus is talking about going into a house and, 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 and letting your peace fall on them. And if it doesn't, you know, your peace will return to you. And, and, and don't, you know, be out there. You're a laborer. You're active in this world. Christianity was never supposed to be this closet thing. You see, the world will say, you take your Jesus and you do whatever church you want to do, right? And now they're even trying to tell us not to do that. In, in, in some states, but you take your church and you do you, you do that. You stay in the four walls and you stay online and, and you stay wherever, but you don't come out here into the public arena, to the public sphere. That's not what Jesus told us to do at all. He wants us to be active in our world. So wherever you work, whatever you do, whatever you are called to do in your world, in your circle of influence, you are supposed to be active with the Lord. Whatever that means, you see, it's like I can't give you all you know specifics and break it down for you because everyone is different and everyone is at a different place. Where you are right now is different where I am. And the people that you are involved with are different than the people that I am in. And where I work might be different where you work. And God has called us to this place for this time right now. Be active in your world. Listen, you are a representative of Jesus. Man, can you imagine that? Your, your, your company might not even let you be a representative of the company, right? You, like, you might work you know, in an office behind a desk. You might, you might be, be there. I mean, you're not going out being a representative. You're, you wanted, if you wanted to be an ambassador to, a, to another nation, you know, you would have to be appointed. You just can't say, hey, I'd like to be an ambassador for the United States. That just doesn't work that way. But Jesus wants you to represent him. You're going out there as a representative of the Father, a representative of Jesus. And you get to represent him by the way you live and by the things that you say. By the way you live your life, you get to be a witness and a representative. Jesus said, rejoice and look to heaven. Let me tell you something. When we look at this world and we look at all the doom and gloom that's going on, you, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. It's very easy to get overwhelmed and say, oh my gosh, what is going on? I hate 2020. I don't want to hear that 2021 is going to be worse. I don't want to, I don't want to just la, 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 you know? But Jesus said, rejoice and look to heaven. Don't let what you see here be the thing that keeps you going. Don't let this right here, the things be the thing that gets you motivated to move forward. You are looking to heaven. See, one day and one day soon, we are going to be there. And I don't want to live with the regret that I didn't do everything that I could for the Lord, whatever the Lord is calling me to do. What is there another television show to watch? Is there another book to read? Is there another, uh, you know, DIY project that you can do? Is there somebody out there that you can minister to the Lord to? whatever that might be. And you might not get them to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, but you can plant a seed or you can water a seed that has been planted by somebody else. Rejoice and look to heaven and know that your father in heaven is looking down upon you and he wants you to work in the field that he has given you. And understand this. You are blessed to have this opportunity. You know, that last thing that Jesus said, he's like, listen, there were prophets and there were kings who wanted to see what you see. And they did not get to see it, but you get to see it. You are blessed. And so he's talking to the disciples that are there. I mean, y'all are seeing something that, man, people did. They prayed and they wanted to see it. They didn't get to see it. And now here we are at the very end of the age. Here we are in the last days. Here we are in this world. And Jesus is like, man, there were people who wanted to see what you see. 
There are people who said that this was going to happen and they wrote about it in the scriptures and they wanted to see what you see. They wanted to be here and experience what you experience, but you get to be here and you get to see it and you get to be a part of it. We get to be blessed because of that. And I know that that is when you're right in the middle of all the craziness and you're right in the middle of the pain and the heartache and, 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 oh my gosh, you know, my world is being rocked. It's hard to see that. But when you look to heaven and you look to the Lord, you realize, man, I am blessed truly to be right here, right now, to be part of this. Let me close this out. Jesus is sending you into the world. He is not wanting you to stay home and, and, and live in fear. He is not wanting you. Listen, we all have a place to be in this life. We all have different neighbors. We all have different uh, you know, people that we work with. We all have different people online. The people that I am able to reach, you're not going to be able to reach. And the people you're able to reach, I'm not going to be able to reach. He is asking you to be his in your world. You can't be him in my world. And I can't be him in your world. But we can be Jesus in our world. And when you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be his witness. That is one of the greatest things that you will ever hear. That is one of the greatest opportunities that you will ever have. But you. Let's close out with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much that we are living in this time and you have given us our marching orders and that we're not to be afraid. Although the things around us might be scary and the things around us we really truly don't want to be a part of and receive and we look to those other times lord when things are so much better lord we thank you that you would give us a desire and an excitement to live in this time and not just to get by but to live the way that you would want us to live to be the witness that you want every single one of your people, every single one of, of those that are called by your name, that the names are written in the Lamb's book of life, that we have been empowered with the Holy Spirit to be your witness. Father, I pray for those of us that are there and, and looking out and we're not, we're not 100% sure how to go about doing this. Lord, I can give ideas and I can give suggestions. Lord, but I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit that you would begin to show those, those people, those your believers, those that are listening to this right now, that desire to walk according to your ways and a desire to be a witness for you in these last days, that they would seek you and hear your voice and be led by the Holy Spirit to the people that they need to minister to. I thank you that it would just become so real. And I thank you, Lord, for the good report that we will hear and how lives will be changed. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Listen, if this is the first time maybe hearing anything about this, or maybe you have heard this and you've walked with the Lord before. Now you feel a little convicted because, man, you just, you haven't been living for the Lord like you should. I want to give you an opportunity to get right with God. And it's so simple. It is believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is confessing with your mouth that he is Lord. It is acknowledging that you are a sin sinner and that you need forgiveness of sins. And then you begin to walk according to his ways. Not according to my ways, not according to a church's ways, but according to his ways. And you realize and you figure that out by 
by reading the Bible and praying and getting close to the Lord and being led by the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. And if that's you, I'd love for you to pray along with me. Father, I thank you so much for those that might hear this message and realize that they need to get right with you. Father, I pray that that person would say this prayer right now in Jesus' name. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins and I give my life to you. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and I confess with my mouth the same. Come now and be the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer or you uh, you prayed that prayer for the very first time or you said that prayer today in uh, just a rededication of the Lord, then I'd love for you to let me know. You can send me an email at todd at focuschurch.com. It would be so good to know. All right, let me close out with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go with God. We'll see you next week.